If you have been following along, you might know that I recently changed my computer. I said goodbye, a sad goodbye to my iMac, my 27 inch iMac. And I said hello to the new 16 inch MacBook Pro. So today I'm gonna to show you how I have set up my new home studio workspace. It's not a new workspace, but my setup is different because I decided to change to a laptop instead of a desktop as my primary computer. So today I'm gonna to show you what changes I made. I have some pictures of the old studio and I've got a picture of the new one and I'll show you a live view of the current one. And what are some of the things I did? How did I use some of the gear I already had? And what's the one purchase that I did make that sort of completed this adjustment from the desktop to the laptop? And if you are new and you're thinking, I don't know who this woman is. Well, my name is Kat. I help people to create more professional and engaging online presentations. And to do so, you need to have a setup. It does not have to be the world's fanciest, fanciest setup. You can do a lot with a little, but given that this is my job, I wanna make sure that I have a setup that really works for me, for virtual training, for teaching people, and that is what I have done. So let's get into it. I'm gonna show you a photo of the September setup. So I did an earlier video showing my September setup, which I didn't actually expect to change very much. So if we take a look here, this is a static image showing my previous setup. This is before I changed my lighting. And you can see that I had my iMac, the desktop on the right. This is my primary computer, tons of ports in the back, which I loved. I had a secondary monitor on the left and my teleprompter in the center, which is a little bit higher. And I usually stand like right now I am standing. So I'm at teleprompter height. And you also will see that I've got the Rodecaster Pro, which is the brightly colored buttons that you can see there on the left. That was below my monitor. Got my Stream Deck. And for those of you who are wondering about the Cube, that is a time timular tracker. I also, in this shot, I have my Sony ZV-1 behind the teleprompter and the Sony ZV-E10, a second camera that was on just a little bit to the right so that I would use that when I was on calls on my desktop. And you'll see some of the lighting which has changed. So that was my earlier setup. You also see the microphone coming through the center. So I had the microphone arm right in the middle between the iMac and the monitor and below the teleprompter. And also there's a Facebook portal kind of below if you're wondering about the black thing below. Okay, so let's go to a photo I took yesterday. All right, so here we have the new setup and I will show you a live version, but this is nice because I can talk about it while standing directly in front of it. So what I did is I actually repurposed this stand. So right now my laptop is actually on a stand that is designed actually for your couch. So this is a multi-purpose stand where you can have different angles and I do actually use this if I'm sitting on a couch or I wanna to move to a different part of the house I can actually put this over my lap and have my laptop there. If any of you came to the earlier stream, you might have noticed that this stand was in an earlier picture because my very first setup with my previous MacBook Pro was sitting on this stand on the desk. Now, <laughs> I will say that this is not designed to sit on a desk. This is designed to sit over your lap. And it's actually not the ideal stand. So I would not recommend going out and getting this stand for your desk. But because I already owned it, <laughs> I thought, let's give it a try. And it actually works really well because it gets the right height that I want for my laptop, which I'll talk about in a second. And it gives me space below where I can put the Rodecaster. And I'll talk about why this is not perfect, but it works. And the other thing is that when I unplug on the sides, when I just take out the the plugs that are in the laptop, I can actually just pick up the entire stand and walk away and take it downstairs. So I've already got the laptop ready to go and can sit on my lap. So I actually do like it. However, the material, it's very wide, so it does take up a pretty big footprint. And the actual material, it's a plastic, 
and I find that it rubs on my desktop and I don't actually love that. <laughs> the other thing you will see in this photo is the new, the Cal Digit, which is just to the right. Um, you'll see that there's a little dock. That is the one purchase that I did make. Everything else, including using a book to prop up my monitor, I have been using that for as long as I can remember. And before you just, the, the Rodecaster Pro would cover it. And you'll see I moved the microphone over instead of in the middle. Now the mic stand is actually, it's a little hard to see in this picture, but I've moved it over to the right side of my desk. So the mic now comes in from the right. I have my Facebook portal in the corner. I've got my stream deck on the corner. And, and I also, you might notice that my camera, my Sony ZV-1 is actually positioned vertical. That is something I am trying. <laughs> And I will explain why in a moment. So let's take a live shot. So this is a live shot right now. We've got my stream on the second monitor. We have my Ecamm, I've got the chat here on this one. One of the things that I really like love about this setup is that I'm now facing the center of the desk. Before, let's go back to before, I used to have to split and I was either looking at the main monitor, looking at the secondary monitor, or I would either be looking kind of up in the middle, but the triangle was not ideal. So I did spend most of the time just using the main monitor, only using the teleprompter when I stood or did training. But now because this, I was able to get this stand to a height where this comes up just below the teleprompter. When I am seated, it's the perfect height. Like apparently from an ergonomic standpoint, you're supposed to be about eyesight with the top of your computer. At least that's what I've been told. And then I can just glance from here up if I want to look at the teleprompter and use that for calls. So it's actually a more natural thing if I'm seated or if I'm standing just to be able to look up in front, front and center. Now I want to address the size of the screen real estate because that was something I was really hesitant about before where I thought, I love this 27 inch monitor. However, I find the resolution of the new 16 inch laptop to be such good quality that I feel like I can get most of my work done on this 16 inch laptop. And I do have the second screen. I don't actually feel like I need to invest in another larger screen. I don't feel like I'm missing a lot. I did love that big, beautiful screen, but I find that my workflow, I can get my work done on this monitor and I have the support from the two others. The other thing I did, if we go back to the shot, I'm kind of in, actually wait, I'm gonna go back to the shot. I'm a little embarrassed to admit this, but I didn't know when you're setting up your displays. I always thought when you're setting up external displays that you had to go horizontal. I'm just really embarrassed that I didn't know that, but hey, we don't know what we don't know. So now my actual display setup is the way that it's set up. So my teleprompter monitor, my 10 inch monitor is actually positioned above. So if I scroll my mouse up, it will go up to that monitor. And if I scroll mine to the side, it will go to the side monitor. That is a change that I made. I know in earlier messages, I kind of mentioned that I go right to go up <laughs> and my brain got used to that. And it took a little while to untrain myself, but that is a change that I have made. And I know we've all been there where we just think, how did I not know that? Or how did I not even think to ask that question? So something else I will say is this, this secondary camera, the decision to try this vertical is because now I do find because I'm centered in my desk and my workspace, it is much easier for me to just look up and use the Sony ZV-1 more often. So I'm not using this one as often in day-to-day -day meetings and Zoom, et cetera. So I do have this set up because I, a goal of mine is to create some shorter form content in the vertical format. And I thought might as well just have this set up. <laughs> Obviously I can move it to different rooms. I can use my phone. I don't have to use this camera, but it is nice to have that set up so that if I want to produce something, I can make that really quickly. Let's talk about port management. So before I got the CalDigit, which I got yesterday, Monday, I got the CalDigit powered dock on Monday. So only two days ago. Prior to that, I was using a non-powered hub that I had for my old laptop that has an HDMI 
It's got three USB ports and a Thunderbolt port. So I was using that. And I was just using a regular old, where is it? Let's see. Just one of these guys, <laughs> just a USB extender that I had. So this was plugged into an adapter and used that. And so that was my setup temporarily for the last few weeks before I actually got this powered dock. It was not a long-term solution. I was proud that I could get my setup running and working, but I did not want the toll on my laptop because this was not powered. So now I have the CalDigit. So let's take a look at the CalDigit setup. I created this little <laughs> diagram for you and it shows you how I have this set up. If we take a look at the top left, you'll see that I use one of my USB ports for my Rodecaster Pro, which is where my mic is connected. And the Camlink 4K is the next one. So this is a capture card for my Sony ZV-1, which I have behind my teleprompter glass directly in front of me. I have then the HD 60S Plus, which is another Elgato capture card. And this is connected to my Sony ZV-E10. Now, I will, let me just pause for a second and say, both of these cameras, the Sony ZV-1 and the ZV-E10, they both do have the ability to connect directly through USB. So you don't have to have a capture card, but you do get that little extra quality. And also I bought those capture cards before I knew that you could do that. All right, let's get back. So then if we go to the bottom, I have internet connected through the ethernet port, which I love. That was something I was doing on, I was just had my ethernet adapter and was plugging that directly into one of the ports. On the, if we go to the top right, I have the Stream Deck XL. So this is plugged into another USB port. The next one is the actual cable that goes from the CalDigit to your device. So that is going directly into my MacBook Pro. And then I have my teleprompter monitor, which is plugged in and I'm using an HDMI USB-C adapter in order to plug that in, which I already was using for my previous setup. So I just plug that in. You'll notice the CalDigit does not have an HDMI. Now it does have an empty display port, which I am considering using this display port to connect to my secondary monitor. So if I switch to this scene right now, this display is actually plugged in directly because the new iMac has an HDMI port, which I do, I love that it has an HDMI port. So right now this is connecting directly. However, what I can do is connect this monitor to the CalDigit using the, the empty <laughs> display port because this is available and this monitor on my left ear, it does have a display port option. I just don't actually have a display port cable at the moment. So if I pick up a display port cable, that is one way I can also streamline that. And then it simplifies plugging in and plugging out. Because right now, if we go to my overhead view, my live view, I have my power to the computer. This is my CalDigit, <laughs> blocking it with my hand. This is my CalDigit. Right now I have my headphones plugged in directly because I do have my in-ear monitors, which you can see on my gear page. I know a lot of people ask questions about those. Right now I'm plugging in directly to the laptop, but I do have a port on the CalDigit. And I also do have the option of the Rodecaster Pro. So there are a few ways that I can plug in my headphones so I can play around with that. But I usually will take these headphones out and put them away. I don't, they're just because I've got an extension cord, it's kind of long. So I only wear these when I need them and I actually keep them in a drawer whenever I am not using them. <laughs> so I'll just, I'll mention that. And then if we go back to this live overhead shot at the moment, so this is one beef <laughs> that I have, a complaint for anyone who doesn't use the term beef. So I am actually using my mouse. I have a, a mouse with a dongle right now and it's plugged in here because I tried plugging it in to the CalDigit in the front. Let's see if we can, if we tip down here. So there is an extra USB, which right now is actually, so this, I am using this, and this is for my overhead shot. So the, the image you're seeing right now is from a webcam. So if I go to my main shot, I can just kinda, this guy. <laughs> so 
this webcam on a stand is currently connected to the front of the CalDigit. This is another thing that I only plug in when I need to do an overhead shot. I don't like having the cable running beside me permanently, so I do put that away as well. However, the reason I bring it up is that when I first set this up, I put the dongle for my mouse in here and the cal it was being a little funny. So I did not, I was not a fan. And I'm not sure what's going on there. So I'd love to hear from anyone who has the CalDigit. Have you had any problems with some of your connections or ports? The mouse I'm using, like one of these guys, it's a, just a little bit better shape. I do have the Apple Magic Mouse. I find that one extremely loud, kind of obnoxious. And so I opted for this mouse that has a dongle. I may be able to change that up, but for the moment, that's, that's something that I have here. And I see actually, okay, so this is interesting. Jeff said, I had serious trouble with the display port cable compatibility with my Cal Digit. Okay, that's really good to know. <laughs> Especially because I'm considering using that display port if anyone else, I know, um, I think Patrick from Everyday Tech was saying that you use one as well. So I'd love to hear from you. Okay, that, so that is the main thing that I wanted to show you is to make sure that, because I know when it comes to connecting everything, that is not always easy. So I did want to make sure that I showed you this image to show how I am currently setting this up. And I will also say that I wanted to make sure that you could see how I have, what is actually still connected because there are still some things that I am using with these ports. I am very happy with the, the more ports. My previous MacBook Pro literally just had the two Thunderbolt. What? <laughs> that was not helpful. So I do like that the, the new iMac does have those extra ports. One of the other things people have asked me is with the new MacBook, what are my thoughts on it? I do, I think it's wonderfully fast and I'm very happy with the portability, the fact that I have a very powerful computer that doesn't have to stay in the studio. I'm frustrated that not all apps are working. So there are some apps that I'm used to using that are not really compatible yet. I'm sure that will change, but that is a frustration that I've had. So that is a quick tour of my new setup. So let's take one more look. We've got the old setup with the iMac, which I did. People have asked me why I got rid of it. It's because I knew I was going to use the new MacBook as my primary computer. It's much more powerful. And I use this to trade in to reduce the price because this new M1 Max MacBook, it's not cheap. <laughs> it is not cheap. So I did reduce the price by doing the trade in. And if we take a look now, you will see the setup where it's centered. I have a little bit more space to the right where I can put different, <laughs> different things. I like having the microphone to the side and not directly down the middle. So that is a really nice change as well. And also in this picture, you can see that I have the curtains that I'm controlling the light and then I'm actually facing the light to the curtains so that they bounce off. So that is my update. If you are looking to see any of the gear, I have updated my gear list. So it's go.capmovahill.com slash gear. That's where I list everything that I'm currently using, sometimes using, and maybe no longer using. You can see all of those things together in one place. And that is now updated. So I hope this gives you some maybe inspiration, things to think about. This might not be right for you, but I wanted to make sure that I shared what is working for me. I'm really happy with having things directly in front of me with a few things tucked off to the side. I do like having the power dock so I can just plug in one primary cable to connect all the accessories. And if you are making changes to your home studio setup, let me know what you're doing in the comments below. And I wish you all the best as you try to get set up so you can create more professional and engaging online presentations.